Step one in any kind of project like this is soil samples. You've heard me talk about this. We talk about this on my Facebook group all over the place. I don't know what kind of products to recommend for this garden if I don't know what's going on in the soil. I need a road map. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like going to a doctor and saying, you know what, I want you to get a medication before you actually do a diagnosis. That's kind of what it's like when you start throwing fertilizers or limes or whatever it is into the soil. We need to do the diagnosis first. And that starts with soil samples. And that's the very, very first thing that we started to do here at the Stroud Rose Garden Project. You can have soil samples tested by a lot of local agricultural extension offices, local universities with a horticultural program. Those are the places to look. When you take the samples, you want to map them and note where in the garden you took them from. So that way when the results come back from, you know exactly the part of the garden that you're dealing with. And you also want to make sure you tell them what you're growing, in this case roses or perennials, and that way they will adjust the information that you're getting accordingly as you need it. When you get the results back, you're going to get some very valuable information. The first thing you want to go look at is pH. Uh, you can see the optimum pH range they recommend, and they recommend that based on the fact we said we're growing roses. So that's the one to keep in mind. That's why it's important to tell them what you're growing. In this case, our pH is 4.8 and 4.2 in these two areas, 10 and 12. That's very low. So we're going to add lime, and you can see they make a recommendation, you know, 185 pounds per thousand square feet for the top one and 245 pounds per thousand square feet for the bottom one. That's how much lime to add in order to get that pH up. Now, this is fairly close between 4.8 and 4.2, so you could, you know, you can go somewhere in the middle at a couple hundred pounds per area. But in some cases, if you have, you know, 4.8 and 4.2 with another area is 5.5 five or 6, just keep an eye on that how much recommendation to add. That's the first thing we're going to look at. Second thing we're going to look at is over here on the right. This is NPK fertilizer recommendations. NPK are the th numbers that you see on fertilizers, like 10, 10, 10, you know, 9, 18, 7, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're looking at. You can see here on both of them, the phosphorus index is very, very high, over 350 in both instances. They recommend the optimum between 50 and 70. This is what happens when you just start throwing fertilizer out there without knowing what you're doing. So in other words, someone was just been throwing, you know, 10, 10, 10, or whatever the case may be, randomly, and have built up the phosphorus levels. The other thing to understand about phosphorus is this is bone meal. So you see that thing about add a cup of bone meal to the hole? Well, if your phosphorus is off the charts, why would you want to do that? That's the importance of a soil sample such as this. That's why you want to be doing this kind of thing. The other thing you see, the potassium is high uh, in one of them, but 62 in one in the optimum. The other one's 121. The other ones were all over the place as well. Again, from just randomly adding fertilizer, potassium is that last number uh, in the NPK. Phosphorus, by the way, is the middle number in the NPK. The first one is nitrogen. So what that tells me is the potassium's high, but potassium I'm less worried about because it will leach from the soil a little bit easier. Phosphorus does not leach from the soil very easily. It takes time for it to get worked out of there by rains, as generally, or watering is what it's going to do. So I'm not going to worry too much about the potassium. The phosphorus, it is what it is. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not dangerous to the point that it's going to harm a plant, but we're certainly going to be adding any more of that. So based on this soil sample, what we're going to do is I'm basically going to raise the pH with lime according to the lime recommendations on the sample. Phosphorus and potassium generally are high, which means we're going to stop feeding it. So we're only going to feed nitrogen for probably about a year. That's the first number on the NPK numbers. So we're going to feed only nitrogen and then probably in another, you know, eight, nine, ten months, we're going to test the soil one more time and see if we're getting back into the ranges we need to be. But this is why a soil sample is so important. It gives you that information to better add what the soil needs and not what you think it may need and overdo something. Now that the soil samples are done, we've looked at them, and we have a roadmap for where we want to go, because you've all heard me say, it all starts with the soil. Without healthy soil, you got nothing.